Hello and welcome to the How to Trade Like a Pro podcast. I'm Wieland Alt and in this episode I have invited CEO Sir Rodu from Cyprus. He is a global educator and analyst at Admiral's Markets and I'm very excited to talk about trading, lifestyle and trading education with him in this episode. Before we go into it, please take a closer look at the risk disclaimer in the show notes and now let's go. I'm here with CEO Sir Rodu. CEO is a trader. He is global educator and analyst at a broker at Admirals. And right now, CEO is in Cyprus. But CEO, you were traveling and living abroad. Abroad means Asia, Australia, things like that. And that's why I'm very excited to talk with you about trading, lifestyle, and, you know, whatever comes to mind in our little discussion. So welcome to my podcast. I'm happy to talk with you. It's an absolute honor and privilege, Willan, to be here uh, with you. And uh, thank you so much for, for the invitation. Really appreciate it. And yeah, I'm also excited to share some, um, some nice information, you know, to, to your audience. Exactly. So let's see what what we can do and what we can find, you know, because I'm I'm I always um sometimes I'm really surprised because you know we talk about you know talk about trading and then some things come up with like I never thought about that, you know. So yeah. let, let's see what we can discover. First of all, usually I like to ask your very beginning, starting being a trader. I mean, you're not just a trader, you're CFTE, which I really appreciate. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so your MSDA as well. So this is really cool. But how did it all start? Wow. Uh, it's pretty interesting how I get started. All right. I remember at that point, I used to do network marketing, particularly. Oh. All right. And I was flying from Melbourne, Australia to Brisbane. I used to live in Australia. And I was flying from Melbourne to Brisbane for a training and uh, and a colleague said she she brought up this discussion about stock and trading and I was okay what is this what, what's that I knew in general that stock market it's where uh, you can make money that's all I <laughs> I knew it's an average uh, mindset let's say uh, but then the colleague said I can share some video with you she sent me it's a she, yeah. She sent me the videos, and I start watching at these charts going some some lines going up, some lines going down. I understand nothing. Five minutes later, I shut down the computer. So I said, <laughs> No, I cannot watch, I don't understand anything. Man. Then okay. the next day I opened it again. I said, It must be something interesting here. It was something within me that it was saying that just have a look, just break that resistance within you and accept this thing and have a look, just have a look. Long story short, a few months later, I had to flew to Boracay Island in Philippines. Mm -hmm. Again, for the same thing. I went there, I had my computer and I start researching on, on YouTube, what is trading, blah, blah. And I realized that it's really something you can work remotely, you can work online. Yeah, and be your own boss. And at that stage, Willan, I was in Boracay Island in Philippines, in a beautiful place. I and can I imagine. So myself, man, with a computer, I even have a picture. I took a yeah. selfie. I'm sitting on a beach bar with my laptop, and was thinking, what if this could be my new life? Wow, you're living already the digital nomad dream, right? Yes. And I was, I was shocked by that thought. Yeah. But because I was where I used to work on my mindset and on my attitude and on my belief system at that stage, and I love personal development in general, mm -hmm. and I thought, yes, that's possible for me. I didn't have that barrier. No, I cannot do it. I said, no, I'm going to learn how to do it. Yeah. But I sold to the idea of how an ideal lifestyle will be for myself. That's what I saw too. Mm -hmm. And then I said, okay, I'm going to do whatever it takes. So I was willing to take the path. And that's yeah. how I get started. And um, then I start like everyone else watching some YouTube, 
uh, buying courses. Of course, I spent thousands and thousands of Australian dollars to buy courses mm -hmm. and all this stuff. And yeah, that was pretty much the beginning. <laughs> the rest, right. I'm sure we're going to discuss them on, on the next questions. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I mean, I mean, it's, it's really, honestly speaking, you're the second person today I'm talking to about trading. And it turns out that you come from some kind of network marketing, which is pretty interesting because it turns out you're a seller, sales guy, right? <laughs> so absolutely and, and now i'm looking into my history i'm not coming from network marketing but i'm coming from sales as well and i feel wow. like um, are sales guys some kind as you know like like this is some kind of genetic being a trader not sure yeah maybe it's it's you know some prerequisite being a trader maybe it's better to be a sales person as well what do you think yeah i think it's uh it's a right right um right way to put it because successful sales people i believe they they have that self driven that comes within and they want to they, they go after goals they go after uh success so yeah. pretty much yeah i agree with you <laughs> yeah some kind of like this and also maybe you can agree as well when i thought about Okay, how is this possible? Because you know, I'm I'm a salesperson, and then I feel like, what is what is that we experience in sales the most of the time? What do you, what do we experience? We experience <laughs> the, the rejection. The rejection. The rejection. Right? Yeah, <laughs> that's what we do. And then you, you think about okay, what do traders experience a lot of times? Losing trades, exactly same. The, The rejection, same thing, yeah, right? Same emotion. Yeah. It's uh, it's the same in a, inside emotion. You yeah. go to someone, they don't buy your service or product, and then you say, okay, maybe I'm not a good salesperson like traders now. Ah, exactly. I lost on this trade. Maybe I have to look at a different time frame. Maybe yeah. should I change my strategy? Yeah, and yeah. so on and so forth. But we got a develop more later on this this exactly. part <laughs> exactly. because, you know back, back in, in my days when i was a sales sales manager back then uh, my boss came to me and said you gotta have to make more turnover and i felt like how can i do this and then i was starting reading all the books yeah and then i realized what i do is exactly state of the art turns out the product was shitty yes <laughs> yes yeah. so, exactly. so this is something and as a trader you feel like Oh, I have to change everything in my mind, or you know, I have to change my approach. Maybe just your your strategy is shitty. So maybe that's yes. just or your management style. So yeah, uh, there are a lot of you know similarities between sales and trading. Absolutely, yeah. I But believe I, I, like yeah, yeah. No, continue, please. I believe oh. like like traders, we go what a beginner trader always go through that. Uh, that feeling, okay, now I'm in a world that I can do whatever I want, whenever I want, yeah. however I want, no barriers, no limit, nobody will come and tell me, ah, okay, you don't write this, you don't write that, you are not allowed to do this. No, you have the total, total freedom and independence. It's something we look to find in our society because But because nobody can do whatever they want just like this, you know, right. and coming into trading and I see that because I coach a lot of traders and man, it's like you put a kid in a candy shop. Okay. And there are thousands, thousands of candies and chewing gums and uh, all this stuff, ice creams. I mean, uh, and, and they want to eat everything at the same time, but that's not exactly how we go to in trading. That's but yeah. most of us, we find it out the hard way. <laughs> that's true. That's true. I mean, the kid gets really problems with the stomach. And the trade yeah. of this account, you know, because yeah, yeah. you're absolutely right. If if you want to go with every strategy, every technique, you know, want to know everything, exactly. maybe it doesn't work out that well. How exactly. was your starting point there? So so you you were thinking about okay, how about being 
a total independent trader and this is my life for now you know sitting in Boracay which is amazing anyway you know yes. then also having the opportunity just to stay there as long as the visa goes in the Philippines it's almost ongoing yeah. forever yes <laughs> you know? exactly so it but was... but yeah. you know so so what what approach did you choose and how did it change over the time so uh, as i already said i took some courses right. some lessons i had a coach and all this stuff my coach gave me a trading plan to create a trading plan mm -hmm. and it was i remember three pages of that trading plan it was like okay which time frames do you want to trade which currency pairs or which indices do you want to trade what will be your ideal uh withdrawn per day or per month when you stop it was so many valuable questions but as a beginner trader i believe it wasn't the right timing to answer mm -hmm. these questions because of the lack of understanding of how the market works and i believe if you allow me to say i see um other educators or many people that they don't necessarily come from the background of trading mm -hmm. and they just learn the basics, but they are a good uh, speakers, let's say, or they have that gift to talk and they are trying to uh, explain to someone how to trade and here and I will coach you and I will do all this and all this stuff. But ideally, they try to teach to someone how to trade, but not how the market works. Mm -hmm. Actually, how, if you trade Forex, how does the foreign exchange market works? It is 24-7, but it is not tradable for a retail trader 24-7 based on my experience and only, yeah. With all the respect to all the traders and educators out there, absolutely to that respect. Um, so... When I started to make the trading plan, um, many of the parts, I just didn't pay attention. I said, mm -hmm. because I used to live in Australia, ideally I could trade only daily charts because mm -hmm. of the time differential between the activity takes place in London and in uh, the New York where mm -hmm. it's huge activity. So that was a huge barrier for me, absolutely right. huge barrier to trade intraday or to do any scalping. I, I couldn't do that. And long story short, I said, okay, I'm going to trade the daily charts. And because there are not that many opportunities on the daily charts, I will, based on the strategy I used to do, I said, okay, I'm going to do three strategies. I'm going to trade, trade trends. I'm right. going to train ranges by mm -hmm. the supports or the resistance. And I'm going to trade patterns. And mm -hmm. I just wrote them on, on my trading plan. And then I said, which currency pair? I put all the majors, all the minors, and exotics as well. All of them? Uh, yes, all of them. And all, I had about 72 or 73 pairs on my yeah. watch list. Yeah. Uh, because I said, okay, I trade only the daily charts. I used to go to the weekly charts to do... Um, analysis, find support, resist, and on some identification, and then on the daily chart to execute. That helped me ideally to learn some mechanics about the market because I had the privilege to observe. Mm -hmm. um, and that was a good thing for me. But going again back to the trading plan, when I fill out the trading plan form, I just put it on the side. Mm -hmm. I never looked at it. And I start doing my own things based on what I thought it was ideally the right thing to do, mm -hmm. what I thought based on my perspective. Uh, but the game changer came when, and, and, and I was doing really good. Okay, don't get me wrong. Daily chart. Um, and uh, it was a, I think it was the Axie from the Axi broker, it was a competition. I think so. It was that one. Because I kind of joined a few competitions. Mm -hmm. uh, and when you perform well, you get funded and all this stuff. And I was getting funded with accounts and, uh, and proprietary accounts. So yeah. 
uh, I was disciplined to achieve the goals. And it's something that I credit myself for, that when I decide I'm going to do something, I try to be as disciplined as possible. And uh, if you if you want, okay, I will say that a lot. I don't used to share that information quite often, but I was looking for a reason to quit smoking at that stage. And the only uh, the only thing I could rely on myself to do that it was when I said, okay, if I want to be disciplined in trading, I will quit the smoking to show discipline for myself. And I did it. It was the only time that I successfully did it. And, yeah. um, and, and then I realized that, okay, that's, that's where I belong. Trading is what finally uh, gets me. It's not my profession. I studied physics in the university and I did a master's degree in in uh, mechanical physics. So I was teaching kids in the high school for a few years when I finished mm -hmm. my degree, but it wasn't that fulfillment. Yeah. yeah. So on, on, on trading then, and I got the accounts, I was trading for a few months and then of course euphoria kicked in. Mm -hmm. And over trading, over leveraging, everything over, everything over. Okay, I find some good success on the daily chart. I'm the king. I will go down to the five-minute chart. I will go down to the I see. minute chart. I see what's coming. <laughs> yeah. And then, I hope for, thanks God, I never burned any account. I never burned any, uh, any account. Uh, but yes, I, I create a lot of mess in my psychology, in my head, a lot and a lot of mess. Okay. And, uh, it took me, man, it took me a lot of effort to get out of that. At some stage, I stopped trading for some months and I was trying to find why am I doing that? Why I do that? I was upset with myself and yeah, I went through many uh, emotional distraction. Mm -hmm. and, and then I said, okay, I will go back and I will try to, to reset. Mm -hmm. But it was that stage again, I took out the trading plan and I say, hey, what are you doing here? It's time to get serious of what you're going to do in trading. And I remember I had a coaching session and I was sharing with my coach, uh, an unbelievable gentleman and trader. I was sharing with him my last trades. I remember it was a four hour time frame. I was trading one of the major currency pairs mm -hmm. and it was a shooting star candle pattern uh -huh. within a descending triangle or a symmetrical triangle. I'm not, it was a triangle. Mm -hmm. Okay. It was against the prevailing trend based on my daily chart uh, analysis. Yeah. And it was a winning trade. I won on that trade two to one. His question, I was excited. I took a nice trade. It was from the, you know, it was nice. His question, if you had an account of one million pounds, would you put on the same trade? He asked me. Mm -hmm. I go, I freezed. I was, I don't know. And my answer shows uncertainty to my trading execution. Sure. It's like he said, the way you're gonna treat a thousand Australian dollar or a couple of thousand Australian dollar account. It must be the same way you're going to treat a million or a $10 million account or a right. pound. Yeah. And at that point, it was another hit, you know, bump. And, and I said, okay, man, you have to get more serious. So again, bring the trading plan and see what are you missing from, from mm -hmm. this. Mm -hmm. Long story short, the game changed when I decide to take this seriously and show respect to the industry and show respect to 
what exactly the trading world is for a retail trader. I'm sure many people, they don't quite understand what, what is in trading for retail trader because they try to trade like um, maybe someone with billions of uh, dollar um, amount in their, in their disposal and mm -hmm. they can move the markets. But we retail traders, really, we cannot do that. And we have to be humble and disciplined in uh, in what we, in our actions. Yeah, that's Clearly. what I believe. It, it's it's there's there's, there's a, sorry a, I talk too much. <laughs> no, it's, it's perfectly fine because you know you you share so much information insights. And what I really like to deepen now is the question your coach was asking you, which was like, would you yeah. would you do the trade? on a huge account, on a big account, like one yes. million pounds, yeah. would you do it or not? And this is a very, very important and also interesting question because we, we definitely have to distinguish between our behavior with a small account and our behavior with a, with a big discount uh, account. And you're totally right. Yeah. It needs to be the same. Now the question is, where is, a, where is the difference in the behavior from your experience? So what did you do wrong instead of doing right? Okay, great question. And thank you so much for asking that question, Vila. Now, uh, after actually 11 years of experience as an active trader, okay, and mm -hmm. of course as an educator and all this stuff, but as an active trader, there is a mental uh, barrier, a mental conflict in our in our in our mind and if you allow me i will take a few minutes to explain that yes please okay so here is the thing we've been told and we are saying it without making it as a personal advice or any personal recommendation to anyone that it's better to trade with money that you can afford to lose or it's not going to be an amount that um, it's going to create issues in your daily life, in your family, in your children, in whatever. So we call them spare money. Spare money at some point, it means as well in our mind, money we don't need. Mm -hmm. So it's like money we don't care if we're going to lose them. If I know that I don't need them, and if I don't care if I'm going to lose them, when I come to an unboundary world of trading, mm -hmm. and I don't have anyone to tell me, uh, ah, you did this or you did that in a negative way, I have the sense of freedom to do whatever I want. If mm -hmm. I don't need a thousand dollars and I put them on a trading account, and I come home from work at five o'clock and it's the time that the new five o'clock, let's say, uh, not GMT time, let's say Eastern uh, European time uh, where I live, let's say in Cyprus, mm -hmm. that's 3 p.m. UK time. And the New York, it's crazily active. I can do some intraday trading. So I have a thousand dollars. Eh, let's just put, I feel uh, tired, but okay, let's just relax a little bit by trading. I mm. open the chart. I find maybe an opportunity that it's not even there. Yeah. 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 And I try to force a trade mm -hmm. and I think that I know what it's going to happen. And I want this trade to have an outcome on my favor, but because I'm overwhelmed and I'm unbound I'm bound to it in my mind. Mm -hmm. Okay, I will put $200. That's 20% of my account. I will put them on the trade. Mm -hmm. The trade give me $200 back, 20% of my account, and I feel the king. Oh, yeah, exactly. just leave it, leave it. Then it starts going against me and against me. And then I get distracted, <laughs> emotionally right. distracted. Right. So the fact that we don't have uh, the sense, we don't show appreciation to the trading account because it's relatively small and the funds we use 
are not funds we need urgently to survive, that comes in conflict of how we see trading as a business. And that's where I believe it's the most, most, most uh, important problem a trader faces with. That's yeah. where I believe it's the it's the big issue that starts with. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I I totally agree. I mean, honestly speaking, this is the experience I I made myself. Same like you, <laughs> pretty sure. You know, because yeah. it's exactly what what happens. So first of all. Hey, yeah, well, it's just a couple. Of, yeah, well, it's not that important. I will get this yes. back. Even yes. though, remember, I just worked a bit more, things like that. So you don't think, take things serious, one thing. Yes. And second, exactly what you described. You open your laptop, and just because you're sitting there, there yes. needs to be a trade right yes. now. Yeah, yeah. Right? yeah. <laughs> because, hey, I'm sitting here. So where's the action, you know? And yeah. of course, that's not the way it works. It, it doesn't work anyway, you know? It's like... You on sales and say, okay, I'm it's morning. Where's my client? Yes, oh, absolutely. <laughs> so, will it work? Right? So that's absolutely. exactly the point. And um, I really I'm happy that you share the story because it's it's so important for people to understand that yeah, that this discipline and this this also we we, we need to wait for it, you know. Yes, if, if there's nothing, yes. there's not a signal, there's not a signal. So what exactly, exactly. But people, I, I, I believe well on that people, they, they come to trading to find an alternative of how they, they work on their daily job. Mm -hmm. But they also don't, ask, don't sit down to learn the nature of trading. Exactly. Like, they ask me, wh why do you do only, I trade only one thing in the morning and one thing in the afternoon. That's all what I do day in, day out. Yeah. No exception, no twisting. Uh, if I lose 10 times, 10 trades in a row, that's okay. I take the 11th, I take the 12th. I just keep, keep going forward with that. And that lead us to why traders, they twist their strategies when they experience a couple of losing trades in a row, why uh, they, they try, they, there is a losing trade. Mm -hmm. Let's give an example. Euro, US dollar. Yeah. We bought it. Yeah. It was a nice breakout, let's say, and we decided to buy it. Any time frame, doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. We have our target our stop loss and the trade didn't work out okay next trade pound us dollar similar pattern few days later trade didn't work out oh my god i'm doing something wrong right okay they go back they see the chart ah you know if i was selling here instead of buying i would have avoided this ah i did a mistake so I missed an opportunity, but you, how can you miss an opportunity that it was never planned? You never plan mm -hmm. for this uh, trading activity. So you cannot miss an opportunity that you never plan for, mm -hmm. for it. Uh, then why do we go as retail traders and uh, especially uh, when I was doing the, the CFT for my certification and it was clearly there. Let's, ideally, we go for three to one, two to one, three to one. Mm -hmm. And everyone wants to go for 10 to one, five to one, 11 to one. I was coaching a trader. Seriously? And, yeah. And he oh, had a target 11 to one and he was on four to one. Um, uh, winning ratio and early he was okay waiting for that 11 to 1 but when we said at the beginning and we're going to develop it later of how the market works for a retail trader mm -hmm. uh, I think now it's the time to share my my thoughts and what I believe and how I trade right. based on this yeah 
because we don't know which markets are dynamics and they change day in, day out, right? Mm -hmm. So the same pattern appears today on the Euro USD and, uh, and it's a winning trade. Maybe tomorrow the same pattern will be a losing trade. Yeah. We don't know that, right? Therefore, yeah, exactly. Okay. <laughs> therefore, we you we we risk one to gain two or to gain three, but this come with the probabilities. So if you risk one to gain two, you can afford to lose sixty trades and win only forty trades, and still being profitable. Mm -hmm. That's based on simple math calculations. Correct? Right. So if that's the case, then why people do not accept that those two patterns on the pound and on the euro we just mentioned on the breakout, it's two, two losing trades out of those 60 trades. Right. People, they don't accept lost because they take it personally. They think a trade lost and they think I lost. Mm -hmm. Trade lost, you are not a loser. Mm -hmm. Trade mm -hmm. won, you are not a winner. They say, ah, I lost the trade, I'm a loser. I win the trade, I'm a winner. And they associate their personality to or to, to the to a trading outcome, to a probabilistic outcome, and that creates a huge issue. But the fact, the real fact, is that they don't accept the probabilities, right. and that's where um, when I when I teach or when I coach traders, the first thing I try to put them into their head and establish is how the market, and I'm talking in terms of probabilities mainly, works for a retail trader. Mm -hmm. And I like to give some exercises to practice. Hey, you are in the eighth loss in a row. Mm -hmm. How do you deal with that? What do you do? What could you do in order to keep you in the game? Right. Because probabilities, we don't know when the winning trade is going to come. Maybe every three losses, one winner appear. Every three losses, one winner. Then you have seven losses, one winner. Then you have five winners in the low, in the row, then one loss. We don't know the sequence. Yeah, you're right. I mean, usually, let's say you have 50% uh, uh, hit rate. And yeah. usually people feel like, okay, then I have my 50% right now. And then uh, I can yes. deal with the losses. Yes. <laughs> ah, exactly. But absolutely. usually it's vice versa. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. They take one loss and they're trying to see what did I do wrong? I mean, man, you didn't do anything wrong. It's just, that's the nature of trading. Losses are, are here. And for, for myself, going for two to one minimum on any trade, mm -hmm. no matter what, I don't play around with to move my stop loss to break even, to put one target, second, third target, because that's, that change the, how my trading strategy works at the end of the day. And oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Yeah, because you know, like, okay, let's say uh, there's also some something with probabilities. So you say, okay, I yeah. want to have two to one with reward ratio. So I don't move anything. I don't move my profit I don't move my stop loss. I just let things yeah. happen. Yeah. But uh, honestly speaking, two point one two to one is already pretty high, isn't it? Absolutely, absolutely. We take advantage. Of, I trade mainly forex. Okay, CFDs. Mm -hmm. uh, taking advantage the volatility, taking advantage that the price moves. But as I said earlier, I'm, I'm extremely specific. Uh, I became extremely specific. I, neither me or yourself, I don't know if you agree with that. We didn't born to be a trader. It's a skill we developed yeah. by our willingness as well. We wanted to do that. We had a burning desire to do that. We had that sparkling. That True. sparkle, we want to do that. Um, we didn't come to try the water. Okay, we try the water, but we wanted to do that. Yeah. So we have to figure it out. And 
And yeah, at the end, from trading all the majors, minors, and exotics, and then going to the four-hour chart, man, it used to take me a whole of a weekend to make trading plan and analysis for all these pairs the whole weekend. Yeah. I, it was too much work, and I was overwhelmed with that, with that work. But mm -hmm. I was doing it because I thought that's how I have to do. But then when I realized, okay, the markets move in a specific way. The markets move in a certain amount of pips on average during the day. So I use the ATR to find the average true range of the of the price. Mm -hmm. Like if you want, I can give you an example. Yesterday, I was yes, trading. Please. Okay. So people, they will know how I trade as well. I mm -hmm. trade the DAX at the London Open. And that's something I do also on my live trading webinars. Every day start at 7.30 a.m. Uh, UK London time for 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. And right at the London Open, I do live DAX trading, scalping. Yeah. I yeah, have... I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share the link in the show notes. So the people okay, yeah, that would, be, that would be awesome. It's a free webinar. I mean, everyone can right. enjoy. Exactly. Um, so I do a specific thing there, but then I don't do anything for the rest of the day until the New York Open. Mm -hmm. Why I don't do anything? Because it doesn't resonate with my personality. That's all. Yeah. I know traders that they are super successful trading intraday. I'm not. <laughs> That's why mm -hmm. I don't need to prove anything to any more to myself i just find what am i good at mm -hmm. i appear in front of the screen at the specific times i choose the euro us dollar only on the new york open and i i'm looking for one specific catalyst mm -hmm. between um i will say it in in my time zone, it's from 3 p.m. my time zone. So that's 1 p.m. GMT until 6 p.m. my time zone. So for three hours, I mainly watch the hourly charts and I'm mm -hmm. looking for a small, narrow body candle to take the opposite side. <laughs> for so the you counter, you're doing counter move. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Likewise. And uh, that's the, uh, I trade bullish and bearish and golfing, but mm -hmm. I trade with the buy stop and sell stop orders, the potential of the, the bullish and golfing. I, yeah. To take that momentum, because imagine the market moves down. It takes the low of the previous candle. Mm -hmm. Everyone is being sold to the idea that, hey, the market is moving lower and lower and lower. But nope. it's the time I put a buy stop order above the previous candle um, open if we are in a downtrend. So uh, if, the, okay. ma if the market is going to uh, reverse, absolutely it's going to give a nice move. That's what Here it does. Go. Here we go. Uh, yeah. Honestly, I do uh, the same. I call the strategy the expander strategy yeah. because, you know, it's like oh, being overstretched, wow. you know? Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, but and I it's, totally um, agree. Yeah, it, it's, it's, it's something that it resonates with my, with my character. It yeah. resonates with myself. That's why I do it. Mm -hmm. Now, yesterday, for example, it was exactly this pattern I described on the one-hour chart. Mm -hmm. And I put my two to one stop loss, take profit. I watch support resistance just to be within the boundaries and so on. The market gave three to one. A trader, a novice trader, let's say, or a beginner trader will say, oh my God, I missed the opportunity. Damn. Mm -hmm. Next time I'm going to go for four to one to recover. No, it's not like that. No. You have rules. You respect your rules. You execute. If you win, you win. If the trade win, it, it's a winner trade. If the trade lost, it lost. Nothing to do with who you are as a person. If you're, how many times I'm sitting in front of the computer 
And I don't take, I'm three hours, man, in front. I don't take the trade because it's not there. True. But it's okay. It's not there. It's not there. It's yeah. okay. Or I didn't understand the market, what it does, so I can place my order. It doesn't yeah. mean I'm stupid or I'm un unable to understand the market. We don't need to give explanation. And that's what I say to traders. You don't need to explain everything, whatever happened, what's happening today with the uh, US dollar, Japanese yen. It's mm -hmm. at a resistance level. Is it mm -hmm. going to break to the upside? Do we have an ascending triangle? We don't know. Maybe. Yes, maybe. But it's, it, it's something you don't need to explain everything if that doesn't resonate with your trading um style right. and you're trying to do analysis when as a certified technical analyst yeah i do analysis mm -hmm. when we do analysis it's a different thing mm -hmm. yeah we do analysis to to trade but we give some um okay if the price breaks above here it can my move up to the next resistance or if it breaks below to the next support but when we trade as retail traders, using leverage, using stop losses, we must have specific rules, accurate rules. And I said to all traders, and I'm, I'm sure you're going to agree with that, try at least for 20 trades, at least for 30 trades, have enough sample size to compare the results and then twist your strategy or uh, maybe your entries, maybe something to have something to to compare with. But a couple of trades, and you start thinking, ah, oh, I have to change this. I have to. Change that. I think it's not the way a skillful trader will develop with this approach. True. I don't know if you agree with that. Yeah, I mean, you you already named it, so. Because I think a lot of people get this wrong. It's a really it's it's a misconception with with uh, traders. So that yeah. they have the 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 expectation they're sitting in front of the computer now everything has to happen. And yes. what they don't what so they don't true. feel like is and what they don't, don't see is that if there's nothing there's nothing and there's also nothing to do. Yeah. But as they feel like okay I want to be a professional trader which means I want to live from trading you know. Yes. Feel like oh. I don't make any money today, right? Yeah. But yeah. you don't lose any money today as well. So this is the other part of the story. And yes. therefore also, maybe it's a good idea to have some some income streams, you know, that you yes. have some yes. sources of income. You know, people sometimes ask, like, oh, why are you doing coaching? Are you such a bad trader? What the hell is going yes. on? Oh, oh, my God. You know, like, things like that. Yeah. I feel like, yeah, 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 you, yeah. you don't get the whole story because yes. if I don't have anything else, I'm screwed when the market doesn't work the way I need it to work, right? Yes, So exactly. this is one thing. And second, honestly speaking, it's it's a business as well. So we're businessmen. So what, what can you say? But uh, it's... It's exactly it's the it's a mixture of both, and this is what yes. gives us a peace of mind as well. Just to sit there and wait because you know, okay, already I got my months, I got my year, so I'm I'm fine anyway. So let's see what the market offers, and that's yeah. the way to go, right? Absolutely, absolutely. I cannot agree more than with this. Right. Hey, you, absolutely, it's um. I think people they. Be, as we said earlier, or as I said earlier, mm -hmm. um, there are many, everyone can go on a, on an Instagram account and just uh, go outside of a villa or a, a vehicle or whatever, yeah. post some nice stories, nice pictures, blah, blah. But what do you really do? Is that really your, um, is that really what you do? Are you really doing it? Mm -hmm. Again, with respect to all traders, educators, analysts, to everyone. But yeah. at some point, we have to also um, be cautious and and see the reality of, of, of the industry, the reality of being a retail trader. Mm -hmm. 
because I'm sure if we were back to 80s, where maybe you we had to pay 25 or 30,000 to get a, a spot on the PIP, mm-hmm. uh, and back to 80s with the inflation today, maybe 20,000 or 30,000, it's a significant amount of money. Not even half of the people they try to trade now as retail traders, we will, they wouldn't be there. Right. Yeah. So it's also a kind of how do you um, how do you respect this this industry? And um, I think many traders, yes, as beginners, we get in, we want to try different things. Okay, we try one, two, three months. Mm-hmm. Let's get serious. Let's uh, let's move. Let's move on. Let's do something. Let's show to this uh, to this industry the the respect it deserves. Mm-hmm. Uh, or it's yeah. So that's up to there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you, you you always talk so much about respect to the industry, respect yeah. to the markets, I guess. And, and also what, what I just wrote down earlier is like learn not how to trade, but learn how the markets work. Where is the difference really? Wow. Now, imagine when I used to live in, it's something I've done it and I, I, I realize later on mm. i used to live in melbourne australia yeah uh, 9 a.m on average 9 10 a.m it's when the broker reset and it's let's say 12 a.m in uh it's when the broker reset and we are entering in a few hours in the sydney session and then in the tokyo session imagine just because i have from 9 to 11 a.m. Melbourne time availability mm-hmm. to go and try to intraday. Mm-hmm. S- liquidity is low, so spreads are really high. Mm-hmm. If I go to the euro US dollar and I just take, imagine that there are also traders, they don't get talk that, okay, euro New Zealand as a pair, it has on average big spread. Right. Okay, from my experience, I will say round up eight to 10 pips. Yeah. If you try to trade this, especially in a low liquidity times, like it's in the, let's say, Sydney session, mm-hmm. and you go for 20 pip stop loss and 40 pip target to to one, what are the chances? Just the fluctuation of the spread, it just takes you out. Bit or ask, it just takes you out of a trade. Yeah. And and then you are wondering, ah, oh, I took the, the direction was right. Everything was right. So why all the time the trade lost? Why? Maybe I changed my strategy. No, your strategy is good. It's just the Euro New Zealand has a high spread. That time out, that time frame you choose to trade, it's not a high, it's not in a high liquidity. So um, the banks or the institutes, they don't transact the Euro and the QE at that particular time. So there is no so much activity and what the chances for a retail trader. Mm-hmm. So why I choose the euro, US dollar in the New York time. And there is also something I would like to measure so that people, they know exactly how I trade. I don't have anything to hide. Mm-hmm. It's like, it's because the spread gets so minimal due to the liquidity. Oh, of course, it depends on the brokers, different brokers, they get different mm. spreads. But on average, let's say it's a one pip or on average, the euro US dollar during the New York session. So liquidity is high. And if I have a 20 pip stop loss or a 10 pip stop loss, it's it's okay. I mean, for me at that time, it's okay. Mm-hmm. And if I whipped out of a trade, it's going to be based on the price move, not based on the spread whitening and narrowing. Mm-hmm. That's important. And for me, that's crucial when to, when to trade. Or there are, there are traders, they try to intraday Japanese, Canadian dollar, Japanese yen um, during the London Open, for example. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't do that. Yes, they're going to move, but it's higher probability and uh, better liquidity to trade the cable with Japanese yen if you choose that to do so. True. You have a market involved, right? 
Exactly. Yeah. So how the market works and the times there is high liquidity, it's important. You know how many times I sat in front of the computers to trade the euro US dollar, mm -hmm. but when I looked at the ATR indicator, let's say based on the current market conditions, it's about 68 pips today, the mm -hmm. ATR mm -hmm. or the euro US dollar. If I sit at the afternoon, if I sit in front of the computer and from the high to low of the of the today's day, it's going to have 80 people already move. I'm going to call it for the day. I'm not going to stay even there. Right. Uh, yeah. It, it's, so, that's why it, it has to be specific rules for the trader to accurately or if you want to to be for the long run in the trading exactly so liquidity it is volatility it is so we we yeah. need yeah. to have active markets we have to have active markets hours so if you're in asia you focus more on asian exactly titles, you know things like exactly. that or currencies if you're in Europe, your focus goes there. And if you're in the US yes. or the Americas, your focus is there. I mean, it's kind of by nature. But you're right. If you have a 24-hour market, you tend to try everything. Because, oh, I can't sleep. I go for the agent session. Yeah. Ah, but not with that pair. Not with that currency. Yes. Not with that asset. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure people, not everybody gets this. Not everybody understands. Yeah. And it's the same, you know, when I'm traveling, I have also to have to, have to make a decision what to trade. Yes. And when I'm in Australia, maybe I don't want to go with, with the U.S. session. So yes. I could trade the future 23 hours a day. Yes. No one else is trading. <laughs> Just yes. Me, yes. <laughs> Absolutely. I totally agree. Totally agree. And yeah. I think that's how then that's how the new traders come into the industry. They they have to be taught, yes. hey, this is you know, congratulations that you choose to try trading, but here are a few things about how is the nature for a retail trader to trade. Right. And instead of, okay, let's do a moving average crossover, you buy when the fast cross uh, above the slow and the opposite you sell and uh, because it needs only only one losing trade for the beginner trader if it experienced few winning trades with a simple strategy only one losing trade to challenge his or her psychological uh, stability true yeah true. that's always and then it just go to what we explained earlier with this cycle and trying to find all these different stuff yeah wow so you know, just to, to you know to sum it up a bit yes as you're working with traders with, with new traders maybe experienced traders as well yes. i mean we all yes. need some kind of coaching or you know some feedback once in a while so Absolutely. from your point of view as as a suggestion for new traders, what is the most important thing to watch for? What is the most important thing to learn, to take care of from your point of view? Awesome question. Awesome question, Bilan. Now, I will, I will say first to accept, to accept, not to understand. We all understand something, but can we accept the nature yeah. of trading? That right. it's a pro first, it's a, probabilities mm -hmm. so and the second the distribution between uh, the winners and losses is uh, totally random like in any other business like when we used to sell we didn't know if Theo will be the buyer or Villan will be the buyer mm -hmm. or Jonathan we didn't know so same with trading Maybe you take the same trade on EURUSD today and the same trade on EURUSD at the same time, under the same market conditions, in one week, the one trade win, the other trade loss. Yeah. That's what traders, they have to accept. They all understand it. We all understand it. But to accept it, that's where I find it the most challenging for every trader. 
-hmm. strategies. There are a bunch of strategies, indicators. Everything yeah. is there. Everything works. Yeah. But there is the probabilistic inside. For me, it's more important and it's equally important to also risk management. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but to accept the probabilities, that's going to make the trader's path uh, smoother into the trading world. Awesome. Yeah. That's, yeah, I mean, these are all very, very important ideas and also very important insights. And once again, what I really always, not always, but most of the time experience when I talk yep. with colleagues about trading is we're not talking about strategies so much. We're talking more about psychology, yeah. some kind of management of yourself, of the trade and everything which is around us. So I totally agree. It's most of the success factors of trading or prof professional and profitable trading is inside of ourselves. It's not exactly. in the market, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Exactly. Right. Awesome. Theo, thank you so much for all the insights. I'm very sure there's more to come. So we will continue this one later on. But for now, thank you so much. And um, I will link everything in the show notes so that people can reach you and uh, you can discuss with them as well. Absolutely. So Willan, if you allow me to say also, it was a, again a privilege and honor to be invited in your show. Uh, you are an exceptional trader. You are an exceptional human being. And it was one hour full of um, enthusiasm doing this podcast with you. And really, thank you so much. That's already it. And I really hope that you enjoyed this episode and you took away some learnings for your personal trading. If you want to learn more about me, about my interview partners, if you want to have a one-on-one -on -one coaching or even get into a training course with me or my interview partners, just get into the show notes and follow one of all these links you find there. And then I will be happy to hear and see you again. Your Wieland Alt.